Sammy. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, please subscribe. Wow, I've never done that at the beginning of a video before. <laughs> yes, my shirt does have strawberries on it. Thank you for asking. So today's video is going to be a little bit more of a serious one, but not really. I don't want to make it that serious because it's not really that serious. It's just something that is a thing that exists. And I'm doing this video because I noticed that not many people have made a video on this topic, mostly because I was looking up advice on how to deal with it and there was none. Specifically, I was looking up how do you fly when you're claustrophobic, which is me. Hi, claustrophobic here. <laughs> Claustrophobe? No, I'm not gonna call myself that. I don't think that's right. So this whole video is going to be about being claustrophobic. Now let me explain a little bit what claustrophobia is, at least what, to my knowledge, what I've been told by doctors. Claustrophobia is basically a type of anxiety disorder that your anxiety acts up when you are in tight spaces. It doesn't have to be tight spaces, but that's usually the, um, you know, example that doctors use. So one of the parts I'm making this video, uh, claustrophobic people are not just afraid of like, I don't know, seven minutes in heaven or like being trapped in a coffin underground like when are real people in their everyday lives actually in situations like that so let's go back to when i was diagnosed with claustrophobia because yes that's actually a thing i didn't know you could like i thought it was like oh people are just like oh they're claustrophobic no you actually get told by a doctor i always chalked it up that i had anxiety because i would have trouble breathing, yada, yada, yada. I have all these symptoms and I didn't know where they were coming from. And the first time I ever remember experiencing these symptoms was in a classroom in sixth grade. And I was specifically in this class sitting in the back of the class away from the window. So there was like a corner of the windows, the door, and then like the other end of the classroom. I was back there, that was my seat. Whenever I was in this class, I suddenly could not breathe and I felt really sick. I would always go to the nurse and they chalked it up to being the air conditioning vent was above my head and that was causing me to have an asthma attack which was causing me to not be able to breathe which is causing me to feel nauseous. Great diagnosis for a school nurse but oh did I learn many years later she was so wrong. I went to a psychologist? Psychiatrist? One of those <laughs> in eighth grade and I was diagnosed with generalized anxiety so like hi I have anxiety in basically every situation in my life and in his words, a very extreme case of claustrophobia. And um, that's the story of how I knew like, oh wow, that one SpongeBob joke is now offensive to me. <laughs> If you don't stand so close, you're making me claustrophobic. What does claustrophobic mean? It means he's afraid of Santa Claus. No, it doesn't. <laughs> Not really. So I'm going to list off a list of places that I just came up with at the top of my head that make me feel extremely claustrophobic. I actually have my laptop on my lap. So if you see me like looking down a lot, that's why I'm reading my notes that I made to make sure I didn't leave out anything. Grocery stores, cars, traffic, long lines, tight clothing, large rooms where the exit is very far away. <laughs> Meetings with time constraints, airplanes, showers, necklaces, hats, people, restraints, elevators, the dentist, you know, big wide open spaces on some bad days. <laughs> Let me explain some of these because as someone who like isn't claustrophobic or is like completely like not mentally ill at all, does that person even exist? Um, this might sound weird like, how are you claustrophobic in a restaurant. That's how you sound apparently. Okay, so picture this. I go into a restaurant and I sit down. I order my food. The waitress walks away. It roughly takes about 30 to 40 minutes at a popular busy restaurant for food to arrive once you've ordered it. That is a restraint as I like to call it. I am stuck there in that chair waiting for up to 40 minutes until I get my food. And then I have to actually sit there and eat it, which means I'm stuck in that chair for even longer. So I freak out. Internally, usually you can't tell, but if I'm at a restaurant with you, you know me in real life, in my brain I'm mentally killing myself <laughs> because I literally feel like I'm going to die if I do not leave. <laughs> when I'm in a restaurant or a situation like this, um, my clothes start to feel like they are physically strangling me. Like this shirt, I could not wear out in public because it has this collar right here and it's not a stretchy collar, it's like a fitted collar. Um, so if I wore this out in public, I would literally feel like I'm choking to death. I have thrown up before. <laughs> TMI, I don't know if that's TMI, but I have thrown up because my invisible shirt was choking me. <laughs> Chokers, so cute, can't wear them. I literally feel like, <coughs> oh my God, do you see that? 
chokers immediately just make me feel like I'm literally being choked and strangled to death, so I cannot wear them. Even if they're not tight, like anything around my neck, necklaces, uh, lanyards at concerts, I cannot do it. It just is not something I can do. Hats! If I'm out in public, I literally just can't have anything touching my face in my general area. I don't know why. I, I often rip my hat off if I'm wearing one. I wipe my lipstick off or my chapstick off if I'm wearing it. Cause even that like sensation of something honing down on me causes me to have a panic attack, which is basically what happens when I feel claustrophobic. It develops into a panic attack and then I just die right there in public. If I'm in a store like Walmart, Walmart is a great example because I could not go into Walmart for four years. I could not set foot in a Walmart because like the front section of Walmart, like the produce department, it's good, it's dandy, it's right by the exit, I'm fine. But like the toy department, the electronics department, the book department that's way in the back, I would get there, I'd be pushing my car and I would just feel like I am stuck in this giant building, like it is crushing down on me and I needed to escape but I couldn't because obviously I'm shopping, I have stuff in my car, I can't just run and take it out of the building or else I'll be arrested. So that's why Walmarts are the worst thing in the world and I prefer tinier stores like Target <laughs> or like a mom and pop grocery store that's tiny. I actually do not shop at Walmart for groceries anymore. I shop at a place called Fry's. It's a grocery store here in Arizona and it's so tiny, it's great. I can get from the very back to the exit within like two minutes. Walmart definitely takes like five, so you know. No Walmarts for me if I can if I can take it. I'm better now though, I'm better now. I can go into a Walmart because, fun story, when I moved out on my own, there was only a Walmart in walking distance from me and I had to go shopping at it. And I walked on over there, I went inside and I had all my groceries in my car. I'm like soy milk, vegan lunch meat, frozen stuff that like should not like sit out for a long time. And I was out, I remember, I was looking at the vegan yogurts and I just, started feeling the feelings, you know, I was tugging on my shirt, I was feeling like I was actually going to die. Um, and I just stopped, grabbed my purse out of the cart, and booked it for the exit. Like I'm talking like not running, but like definitely like speed walked my way out of there. Um, and I didn't go back for my groceries. I just went home and had a little cheeky cry and then went and walked around to Ross because Rosses are tiny and they don't give me anxiety. Another thing that makes me super claustrophobic is time constraints. Now you might think, how can you be claustrophobic by something that doesn't exist? But they do exist and they're real. So I'll give you a broad spectrum that most of you can relate to. School. You go into a class at like two, what time did you go into? I've been out of school for too long. You go into a classroom at 1.45 and you know you're gonna get out at two, 37, okay? That means I'm stuck in this classroom. I mean, I could raise my hand and be like, hey miss, can I go to the bathroom? But uh, what if she was like, you mean may I? And then I just have a full blown panic attack from my anxiety. So no, that's, no, that's not gonna happen. Um, so I feel stuck, completely stuck, trapped. Um, what did I write? I'm really unable to focus on anything when I'm feeling like stuck. My mind just is escape, 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 get out, escape. That's literally what my mind says to me when I'm in some place. I often look around the room, I look for a garbage can. That's one of my things that like calms me a bit because I often uh, feel like I'm gonna vomit. Like, So I often look for a trash can. If I'm near a trash can, I'm like, okay, if I can't escape, at least I'm not gonna puke in front of everyone. I can puke in this garbage can and then they'll let me leave because who wants to be next to someone who's puking? <laughs> Another thing that helps my claustrophobia not to get to me is a water bottle. I have to have a water bottle when I'm out in public in my hand or at least in my backpack to where I know I can get to it because if I am feeling claustrophobic, for some reason drinking water helps me feel like I'm not gonna throw up anymore because often and also, um, my mouth gets really dry and I get really sweaty and I get really hot and my hands are really shaky and just having like a water bottle to hold on to and to like gently sip at to like take my mind off of the impending doom <laughs> is amazing. And like, honestly, the fact that concerts now take the water bottle cap off your water bottle when you go in, I get it. It's for the safety of the artist, but some of us can't go without a water bottle for an entire concert. So you know, fix that. Okay, rant over, bye. <laughs> I feel like in the media, claustrophobia is portrayed as like this funny thing that, oh, 
Jerry, did you hear about that time he went and did seven minutes of heaven and completely freaked out? He's claustrophobic. Claustrophobic? You must be afraid of Santa Claus. Ha ha ha. I mean, it's fun in games, but honestly, it's probably one of the worst things ever because you can feel claustrophobic in your own bedroom. You can feel claustrophobic in an empty field. I've had it. I've been at a concert in an empty field that I felt like the sky was going to eat me alive. Fun. My brain is a fun place. You should come visit. If I go into a restaurant, you best believe if we're sitting in a booth, I am sitting in the seat that like has open view of the restaurant. If like I have to scoot in and then you scoot in next to me, uh-uh. We're leaving. We are not sitting in that restaurant. Or those booths, oh my god, those booths that are like a circle, like a half circle, and like six people can scoot in and like, oh my god. <laughs> Gross, how can you help? Let's say you have a friend who's claustrophobic and that's why you're looking up this video or you're claustrophobic and you wanna know how you can have other people help you. These are ways that have personally helped me. I'm not saying these will work for everyone, but first I'm gonna tell you what not to do because it tends to be the thing that people do. So if I am out and I am freaking out, first I'm gonna tell you the signs that if you are at least with me, this might be for other people, it might be not, but these are the things that I do when I'm starting to feel claustrophobic and I start to feel that panic coming on. So the first thing I usually start noticing myself doing is I start going like this to my shirt. I start pulling down on the collar of my shirt because like I'm saying, it feels like my clothes are attacking me. Like I said, I'll often take off my hat, I'll often tuck my hair behind my ears or just in general put all my hair behind me. I'll wipe off my chapstick or my lipstick. If I have rings on, I'll take off my rings and put them in my purse. Sometimes I even have to take my purse off if it's a backpack and hold it in my hands because just the straps being right here is too close to my neck and I feel like I'm dying. But I feel like the most common thing is like the whole tugging of the shirt, like feeling like you're suffocating. That's probably the most common one that I do. The next thing I try to do when I am in a situation where I definitely can't leave, like in a class, a lecture, at a concert, I close my eyes like this and I'll just like breathe because I'm trying to like forget where I am for a second, but sometimes this makes it worse because when I open my eyes, I'm like, oh my God, there's, oh, I'm here, I'm here, oh. And then like it gets worse. So maybe that's not, that's advice. Don't do that probably. Hello. Editing Sammy, I wanted to point in though, the whole closing the eyes things, it gives me a brief second of like relief from what I'm feeling, so that's often why I do it, even if afterwards I feel worse. Sometimes that like brief like 30 seconds of feeling like I'm not dying is enough to bring me out of feeling like I'm dying. Okay, back to the video. If, there, if I'm sitting down in a chair and there are armrests, I find myself gripping onto them with dear life, like in a plane. Don't even get me started about planes. Planes are the worst. I can't do planes. Planes make me want to die. Wow, this video is gonna be demonetized <laughs> if it wasn't already for being about mental health. <sighs> so if I'm sitting there closing my eyes, gripping for dear life, pulling onto my shirt, sometimes I'll have my phone in my hand and I'll just literally be holding it like this or I'll like put it on my chest and just like hold it like this really tight because I'm just like trying to like contain my insides from falling out of my outsides. <laughs> now what you can't, what you shouldn't do, what you really shouldn't do, it's basically, I'm having a panic attack is basically what it's happened. It's just not being brought on by nothing like some of my panic attacks are, it's being brought on by my environment. Like the worst thing you can do, and I've had people do this, be like, it's fine, you're fine, everything's fine. There's so many people in this room you really think it's that like oh. that is the worst because like I know it's fine guys like I know in my head like freaking Walmart isn't gonna kill me I know that but like do I really know that? Cause like my brain is really telling me that I don't know that. Um, but I know that, I know it's fine and that's not gonna stop it from happening. You're not gonna be like, oh, it's fine. I'm gonna be like, I'm cured. This is not how this works. What you shouldn't do is try to touch me at all. Like if I'm like freaking out, like sometimes my mom, when I've been freaking out on like a bus, like one time we tried to take a bus to Disneyland and she like tried to hug me and I'm like, oh my God. Ugh. Do you think when I'm feeling like I'm being crushed alive by my own strawberry shirt, I want to have hands on me at all? I don't even want my own skin touching me, let alone someone else's hands, so please don't touch me. Other people might have preferences on this. They might like the whole um, like compression of having someone grab onto them. I personally do not. That was not English. I slurred my words. And lastly, don't just like take me and leave. I've had friends do this where I'm like freaking out and they can tell and they're just like, they grab my hand and like, okay, let's go. Come on, we're leaving. If you're gonna be like this, we're leaving. Um, I need to stay in these situations so I can get used to these situations so that I can deal with my claustrophobia. Because if I'm just gonna leave every time I feel claustrophobic, um, 
I'm not gonna get any better. The one time it worked is when I left Walmart once and then that put in my brain, I'm not trapped. I can leave whatever I want. <sighs> um, but yeah, don't just like up and like be like, okay, then we're leaving. Cause I can still have fun, man. I'm just gonna be internally freaking out. On to what you can do. Distractions. Distractions is my number one tip because I am focusing too much on what's happening around me. Uh, like in a big greater sense, like what's happening around me, what store I'm in, what concert I'm at, that type of thing. A big one that I didn't mention is if I'm really far away from my house, I feel like the exit from where I am at, like let's say I'm on a road trip and I'm like all the way in like LA, that's like an eight hour drive away from my house. So I feel really claustrophobic because I'm like my escape is an eight hour drive to my house. You know, I don't know if that makes sense, but like if my house is far away, my house is the exit from everything around me and I freak out. For instance, speaking of concerts, when I'm at a concert, the second the band starts playing, everything goes away. I am completely fine. My everything is just like calm and chill because I am completely distracted by what is going on on stage. And that's literally all you have to do to help me is distract me. Talk to me, take my mind off of the horrible things I'm thinking in my head and it'll be so much better for me. Like just talk about anything. Um, not that I'm freaking out, that doesn't help at all. Please don't bring that up because then I freak out more. But just talk about anything. Distract me from my impending doom inside my brain. And the last tip I have is offer an out. This is definitely the best thing I find that has helped me is if I have an out and I know I have an out. For instance, I had this teacher who uh, didn't have us ask to go to the bathroom. She was like, if you gotta pee, you gotta pee. Just get out of here. Don't bother my lecture with your bladder. So we would just get up and leave and oh my God, thank you, Mrs. I forgot your name. But every time I was freaking out, I just had to pee. So I just got up and left. Um, it was great. I usually am the one to be like, hey, just want to let you know, I'm freaking out right now. So like if I get up and leave, I'll probably come back. But like if I don't, come and find me, you know? I just need the people around me to know that, hey, I might like bop out real quick, but I'll be back after I like puke and like expel every bodily fluid in my body like 30 times and then I'm fine. <laughs> TMI, but it's the real world, guys. Also headphones work. Headphones really help sometimes, um, but they also sometimes like really kill me because like having something like this is like oh, choking me though. Oh wow, make a gif out of that, great. So yeah, that's um, all I know really about being claustrophobic for the past uh, 22 years. <laughs> Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If any of you guys are claustrophobic and you have tips for flying, that's actually why I was, you know, I made this video is because I was Googling how to fly when you're claustrophobic and I didn't find one video because I'm going on a trip, I'm gonna be in a plane for like 12 hours and I need to not die the entire time. So if you have any tips, that'd be awesome. Um, no medication though. I'm not a big fan of taking medications for stuff like this, so. Anything but like Papa Zanny and like chill man, anything but that. So yeah guys, I hope you liked this video and I hope it helped if you were struggling this. If this is your first time seeing my videos, please remember to subscribe by clicking the subscribe button. If you actually liked this video, please remember to like it by clicking the thumbs up. If you were subscribed already and you have not yet, click the bell below to turn on my notifications so you are notified when I post. You can actually enjoy my content during the party. So thanks for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys! Flop! Bye. My butt's asleep!